Hi, welcome back to the video. So to start off, we're just going to go ahead and create a drop-in replacement for our simple game service that will actually help us do some useful work. So Bolt Game Service is going to implement the same interface, um, but start our server or join our other Bolt server. Um, it's pretty much going to start out as the simple game service. We're just going to copy paste it because we still want to implement the interface. We still want the event bus and we still want all these methods but instead of doing something local we're going to actually start our bolt server and how we do that is we say bolt launcher start server new UDP endpoint and this is using the UDP kit namespace that's part of Bolt, and we'll say UDP IP V4 address any and a U short of the port. And that will give us, that will start up our server on that, the address of the local machine and the port that we pass it. Um, then we want to do Bolt network load scene and we're going off the, the enumeration bolt scenes and we don't have anything here uh, but this is a, a class that is compiled by bolt that'll give you static strings of the names of all your scenes but the problem is that we didn't uh, we didn't add any scenes to the um, to the uh, build settings so bolt doesn't see any scenes so we're going to go to the build settings and we're going to, well this is current is nothing, we're going to save this as rogue, rogue game. Um, we'll add it and we will add rogue start as well, which will be the start. So start is our launcher and then game is the scene that's to be loaded from the context. And if we, I don't think it automatically, yeah, we need to go ahead and compile a bolt again. I think that was a success. Did it work? There we go. So now I have two um, values. I have rogue start and rogue game, but we don't want to load the rogue start as a bolt map. We want to load we want to load this game should have like um, all the art assets already laid out for the map or um, enemies already spawned if you're doing something like that uh, you don't want to load the loader scene so and um, this call is actually like synchronized across the network so if your server says to load the scene game game map 2 and you're on game map 1 then it's gonna force that for everyone connected to the game it's gonna push that out and everyone will be loaded into map 2 and so if you have a rotation of game maps you're playing or something like that it'll uh, it'll auto always be handled by the server anyways um, second thing we need to do is um, create a callbacks class and hook that up with strange. So I'm going to go ahead and make a bolt folder because there's quite a few bolt specific scripts that we need to create. And I'm going to create one called uh, callbacks. And we'll create us two scripts. One will be the um, bolt global event listener injectable. Actually, I'll call it the global event listener injectable. Mm. It's tough. Uh, it's tough. Tough. It's just such a long name to call it that, right? And then we'll have our rogue server event listener. These guys used to be called callbacks uh, in Bolt. I like the name. The base class was called Bolt callbacks, and now it's called Bolt global event listener. I like callbacks. It's just shorter. But this is the same kind of thing that you'd see inside um, something like uh, Photon. Photon has um, a callbacks class where you get global events, right? Like you, you're, someone has connected to the game, or someone has left the game, or the game has changed to this map. Stuff like that um, comes in a main callbacks class, and that is Bolt Global Event Listener. 
as a class. We'll throw it in the rogue namespace. And what are we going to do here? Well, uh, first things first, we need to implement the I view. Well, the, the only thing we're going to do in this uh, in this class is implement the I view namespace, which is from strange extensions uh, mediation. And this is something that um, if you put it on a mono behavior, it'll on its awake method, it'll it'll look for um, the context view in its parents. So it requires uh, strange generally requires that the classes that get injected are children of the main context view. But in this case, Bolt manages um, the instantiation of its global event listeners at, in a different place. So you can't have it as a child of this object right away. So um, if we want injections, and my Visual Studio has loaded two copies of itself. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but anyways, we'll carry on. So uh, we want to add injections. We want to um, implement this interface, which will allow us to register as a view with the context and get our injections. We'll look inside strange scripts, uh, for extensions, mediation, implementation, and we're looking at the view class. Now, uh, what we're about to implement isn't a view, uh, and it shouldn't be thought of in that architecture, but it does do the same functionality with this bubble to context method, where it basically tries to register with the context. And here's a key thing is that this part, um, I'm not going to go through it, but it looks uh, in the parents. It basically loops up through the parents and looks for the context view there. Um, but this one, it looks for the context view anywhere. And that's what we want because we're n we know we're not going to be a child of the context view. So we need to this block to execute, which means final try has to be true. And if you look ahead in awake and start, um, it doesn't do the last ditch true. Uh, this is the third parameter. Final try is the third parameter. And it doesn't do that until you hit the start method. But we want our injections to be inside awake. So it's a very simple fix is just to have the final try happen um, in awake. And you know, you could tell me like, uh, hey, why don't you just get rid of this? Um, I could. I very well could, but I don't know. I just don't. I've, I've left it. This is only a single script. So now we are actually on to We're on to, um, okay, there's some things it's not happy about, which is just a bracket here. Copy, paste, error. Weird. I don't know what I was doing there. Should be fine. Okay, so now we're on to our rogue server event listener. And that'll come from the global. Well, we have to get our name space rogue. And this will be a global event listener injectable. Um, and the beauty of all this that we really want is to be able to inject the context dispatcher. We want that event bus because um, that is our global communication center for our strange application. So um, when the rogue server says, hey, I've loaded the map, then um, we want to tell the rest of our application that. So let me just uh, take a look here. Um, the first override we're going to do is public override scene load local done. And it takes the parameter a string map. Now, what this is basically saying is that the server map is loaded. The map is loaded on the server. Server has map loaded. And uh, that should happen when the completion of load scene happens. And we will um, we will dispatch our own event if we'd like. We could say service event map loaded. 
or scene load response. Well, I'm just going to leave this for now. There's not really any reason for us to send an event at this point because you, all you'll see we're going to do everything uh, in this method. But something else we need to do is um, add this attribute. And this is the reason why this bolt global behavior attribute, this is the reason why, can't spell today, uh, we don't get control of the instantiation. Bolt looks for things that have a bolt global behavior attribute that are global event listeners and it just manages it for you. So you can tell it that it's a server only script or you can tell it that it's a client only script and you know I mean if the local scene is done the server is the one who should instantiate its entity so you might say something like um, entity equals bolt network instantiate uh, bolt and then you need to have a prefabs and this is a lot like the uh, the bolt scenes in that you have a set of prefabs that you add certain scripts to that bolt picks up and it'll generate static names for for this and um, you can only instantiate it through the bolt what's in bolt prefabs and right now we have nothing so that's going to be an error um, but you can see you don't want this to be called um, if you're trying to make an authoritative game where the server owns it you don't want the player to uh, this script to happen you know, for the client only on the server so we're going to leave this for now because we're not there yet but um, if we remap this so we're almost there to the point of starting our bolt server one last thing is that we created bolt game service as a drop-in replacement for um, the simple game servers and that's how easy guys that this really is I mean if you want to change implementations you just remap your interface and you know what yeah you're, you're probably right that certain libraries won't have the same APIs. There'll be drastically different paradigms. This might not work. You might have refactoring, but I'd say that's okay. Um, you, just having the interface forces you to think about what you're doing a lot more, and I think just for injection it's really handy. So what about our start app command? Do we need to change anything? Th that's the beauty, right? We don't need to change anything. This, uh, this code is all isolated behind this interface, and that's, I think, really nice. So we're going to be starting the server and we're going to listen for a response. Do we have the response being sent? Yeah, we do. Let's see what happens. Okay, so uh, some things happened. Not, not everything. Oh, server has map loaded. Good. Started server. So we got all the events back that we wanted. Uh, we're missing our context view though, so that we need to add that back. But this is the Bolt console, and it's uh, something that kind of you just press tab to get it open, and it's uh, for the Bolt. It just gives you a log of what Bolt's doing, and you can see that Bolt creates its own object, and it's got our rogue server event listener instantiated. That's because we told it that it was a server, and then we called start server on the launcher and now we have a server and it's running so if we had a public IP people could connect to us right now um, there's a few more things we need to do to clean this up so I'm gonna go to bolt settings bolt settings running out of room here and I'm gonna go to log targets I'm gonna get rid of unity I don't like having all these bolt um, comments in here we don't need it and the second thing I'm going to do is go to the rogue context view and say don't destroy on load this. That's a unity call and it'll make sure that our bolt context survives into the next scene. So let's take a look at it. We'll start it. There we go. So we started the app. We asked to start the server. We start the server on our own local machine and then we load the map and we get confirmation that the map has loaded through our bolt callbacks. That's really, really good. So next video, we're going to go ahead and work on our prefab, and we're going to get a player instantiated, and hopefully uh, after that, we'll get it moving around. Great.